Surehold Industries presents Project SureFund. Hey, welcome to Surehold Industries. This is where we design, manufacture, and distribute all of the amazing maintenance products that we make for your boat, car, or RV. Now we're sitting here in the back of our Surehold Studios, which is in the back of our facility, and we've got a really exciting project we want to share with you. This is a 23-foot Alberry center console built by the Alberry family in Manawarke, Abaco. Now I happen to know the original owner, and it only had one owner. Now it's 10 years old, but amazingly taken care of. In fact, they just repowered it. But unfortunately, after riding it around for a bit this summer, we're realizing that this boat is starting to show the wear and tear of thousands of hours of great family use and 10 years of Bahamian hot sun. So to make this a Surehold ready boat, we're gonna to put together a project series in totally refinishing this boat and bringing out that diamond in the rock. We're gonna work on refinishing the fiberglass, look at replacing the rug rail. I'm gonna to have to figure out what we're gonna do with that T-top because there's a lot of pitting and the canvas is starting to tear. The bottom paint and bootstripe need some love. The swim platform is unfortunately falling off. And the ride, while is amazing, it probably could still benefit from a set of trim tabs because she tends to porpoise a little bit with that 300 horsepower on her. While we've got a good starting list of what we want to do to it, I'm sure as we get into it, we're going to find a couple other projects I may want to add. Are we biting off a little more than we can chew? I hope not. I think Captain Sam and I have a lot of the fiberglass work and easier tasks under our belt. And then for some of the harder stuff, we're going to bring in some industry friends to help us out. So why don't you join us so we can take this legendary 23-foot center console from Albury Brothers and bring it back to the beautiful showroom shine that it deserves. So we're gonna get started, and the first thing we gotta do is strip everything off that boat so we can work on the fiberglass. So far we've got the boat almost totally stripped down and that went pretty smooth. We had to get the caulking off and the rub rail off and everything else that we needed to make sure we could get into every nook and cranny for wet sanding. I'm going to take the boat down to see Bobby at Bird's Isle Marine. They did the original T-top work on this boat 10 years ago and while it held up great, I want to improve upon it. So I'm going to get that down there tomorrow, we're going to discuss some options and we could start working on wet sanding the console without the top in the way and the sides of the boat, getting it back to where we want it to be. Okay, so we're on the road. I got the truck hooked up to the trailer. We're pulling the Alberry down. We got our appointment all set with Bird's Isle Marine this morning. And I'm uh, gonna see what our options are on this T-top. I really don't wanna go to a fiberglass top on it. I wanna try and preserve uh, the framework, but I did not like the lace top. And my understanding is he has a new way to do the canvas, which keeps the boat lighter, in a really nice looking laceless, so you don't have all those laces all the way around. I was also looking into a new technique that some guys are doing. They're doing the truck bed liners, the Linex in white, and there's a guy here in Florida who does that. So thinking maybe that might be a neat thing to do because that will fill in all the little pits and voids and give a nice finished look. So we'll see what happens when we get to the appointment, see what input Bobby has and uh, see where we're at. Okay guys, so we got the top off the boat. We're down here with Bobby Birdsall at Birdsall hey, Marine. Hey, good morning. Thanks awesome. for having us down here. Thank you. Now this is a family run business. They do all kinds of metal work and 
canvas work and fiberglass work. You do a lot for OEMs. Uh, we do a few, yeah. And then a bunch of custom stuff and then kits. Guys like yourself, you know, restoring boats, brand new builds, uh, you know, upholstery like you stated, canvas work, custom right. fabrication. Yeah, so they've been here almost 40 years doing this and the work is just beautiful. And this original work um, on the Albury project boat that we have was actually done here at Birdsall and you guys shipped it over to Albury and Man of War. Yeah. Okay. And so it, it's held up beautifully. It looks absolutely beautiful. But um, we want to customize a little bit and get some things done for us, for our Sherhold project boat, kind of the way we want um, to, to update it for the way things are today. Yeah. Um, and one of the first things I want to talk about is um, it originally had all this blue canvas work on it and it was, and it was laced. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go to um, a heavy, hard fiberglass top, but you were telling me you guys have a, a laceless option now. Yeah. Yeah, the no lace molding is going to look really trick on here. It's going to look like a formed fiberglass top, but you're going to have the you're going to have the lightweight part of the canvas still. Okay. You're not going to have the expense of the fiberglass hard top, so it's going to be ideal. It's perfect for what you're looking to do. I understand you're um, we're going to be making a couple subtle changes to the top. You want to add a, a front tube light. Correct. Uh, so we'll do some welding there. We're going to put a radar plate in. Okay, that'll give um, us uh, some future protection if we want to add a radar. Absolutely. And uh, just a couple other things. And now, then, what about getting a, a handrail up under here for us to hold on to? Is that something we could pull off? Absolutely. I think it'd be good. You know, you're, you know, if you got to get to the top to, you know, obviously put your antennas down and up and stuff and. Uh, the no lace molding is, it, that look is a beautiful look, but the handrail also will protect people from grabbing the canvas. Okay. Uh, so by putting a handrail on there, that'd be good. Okay. Be nice, yeah. That'd be great. Let's talk about the cushions and stuff I got down here. Um, the upholstery is kind of older, so mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'd like to get these redone and redo it in the same gray. Mm -hmm. I the think that's cool. Gray. We're going to strip the upholstery. We'll reupholster all the items. We'll put the match gray stripe in the center. Okay. And um, all the aluminum, we'll pull the PVC off. We'll pull the discs off. Uh, as far as the leaning post, um, we'll do the same. We'll pull the tray out. Um, that way we can get this coated as yeah, well. Yeah, I, th I think you maybe wanted to get some new rod holders. Yes, yeah, so I was looking at this fiberglass piece and it's pretty cracked up and extremely faded. I'm thinking for this small of a piece, if this is something you still make, this exact piece. Exactly the same. Then it's yeah. probably better off for us just to get a fresh piece with four new um, rod, rod holders in it. Yeah. And then we'll put that back on when this comes back from being coated. I think that's perfect. It, it'll look brand new. It'll have a look that you don't see all the time. Right. And I, th I think it'll be a real good package for you. Okay, well that, that sounds great. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. You'll be ready for us, what, in a couple hours? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, Barry. <laughs> well, either way, just give us a call when you're ready for us to uh, send it to be coated and then we'll come back and get it finished up here in the shop. Sounds good. Okay, all thank right, you. Man. Hey, thank you. You got it. Yeah. Okay guys, today we're gonna to talk about refinishing the gel coat and what we need to do that. The boat is back in our studio. Sam had already had it outside and did a complete wash on it to make sure that there was no dirt, grime, or debris on it and got it all prepped up, got the plastic around it. The top, as you saw, we had taken off at Birds All Marine and all that stuff's being done to it right now. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to work on the fiberglass because we don't have the rub rail in our way, we don't have the top in our way. We can really just focus on the surface of the boat. Now, a couple things that I want to point out and that we're honestly a little bit concerned about is this boat has had three names over the years plus a couple different registration numbers and during that time you could see we have ghosting of lettering here so i believe serendipity was the first name you could see a little bit of an s here the second name on the boat was real something and the r starts here the third name over the summer we had the big surehold oval on it and so we need to be able to make all of that blend back to the original finish now, depending how long some of these sat here and how much direct sun that got, will determine how well we're able to do that. Some of these I'm expecting will come right out and some of these may not come out perfectly. And that's just the case with gel coat in the sun, the way it's been baked. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet sand it 
and get it as close as we can. Now the good news is once we're done and it's out in the sun over time, the sun's gonna help fade everything back to where it was. And there's a couple other tips and tricks that we might do with the new name and the graphics to hide some of what's going on. Now we need to look at what tools we need and what process we need. So let's go over to our workbench and see what Sam's got prepared for us. Hey Sam, I see you're almost all set up. Uh, what do we need for the wet sanding project today? Uh, what are the basic items that we should have all prepared? So the first thing you're going to need is sandpaper. So we've okay. got a wide selection of sandpaper we're going to use today and we're going to be doing that a process called wet sanding. So you're going to need some water and some soap in there. The reason why we use some soap is it acts as a lifting agent. How much soap are we putting in there? Just a little bit. Just we, a drop or so two. So we got our bright wash here. It's just a quality boat soap you can use in just, a, just a one or two drops. Okay, so, so any soap will work but we're using our bright wash because we have it here. Now I see on the wet sanding discs, um, they're not normal sandpaper. These are ones that are meant for getting wet. They're actually yeah. plastic, not paper, so they won't degrade. Exactly. And um, what grades do you have here? Because I know they come in everything from very, very coarse to very, very fine. What are we working with today? So every boat's going to be different, so you'll need to attack each project differently. For our Albury project boat, I think the best way to start would be our with 1,000 grit sandpaper, okay. and that'll take out the etching from the salt and the years of abuse and a lot of the oxidation. And then we're going to clean it up with our second step, which will be 1,500 grit sandpaper. And from there, we should be able to buff it to a final shine. Now guys, when you're wet sanding or doing anything this aggressive on a boat, we always recommend starting light and going a lot heavier because it's hard to undo if you go the other way. The other thing I'm going to recommend is starting in an inconspicuous spot and testing it to get your project done. Now Sam's already done that before we started and figured out exactly the process we need for this project and for this boat, but your boat's going to be a little different depending on the age of the gel coat, the thickness of the gel coat, the manufacture of the gel coat. It's a little bit of a trial and error, so you do want to take it slow and you do want to test the spot before you begin. This is the project that's working for us on this vessel, and the process is gonna be the same for you, but the exact sandpaper grit you start with and how many steps will be dependent, again, on all of those variables. But you can never go wrong by starting light and working heavy. Never go heavy first, okay? So that covers the sandpaper. Yep. Um, which one of the uh, Surehold polishers, I see we've got all three of them here on the table, what are we gonna use for the wet sanding? Well, we're gonna use our lightest tool. This is our original dual action polisher. Okay. It's got a tight little oscillation, so it'll give us a lot of control when we're working on the vessel. We won't get out of hand and we can uh, work with these oscillating motions. What that's gonna do is gonna keep the temperature down on the gel coat, so we won't have any risk of burning or swirling, even with sandpaper. Okay, and the other great thing about this tool, guys, is even though it's electric, it comes with a uh, GFCI protector, and since we're gonna be working with spray bottle of water and all that, we wanna keep you guys safe. So do make sure that you're either using an air-powered tool or something that's got some electrical protection to it, like our Surehold original dual action polisher. Um, so the sanding discs, I see you've got some spacer plates. Yep, these are adapters. We're going to use these to go from the backing plate that's a little bit harder. And this will add a little bit of flex and be able to support the sandpaper disc. The sandpaper disc. And all those are available um, either online or through a local fiberglass supply shop. Of course, yes. Um, not something that we make directly, but definitely easily available. So we've got our polisher, we've got our sanding discs, we've got our water. Last but not least is safety. What type of safety gear do we need when we're doing this? This process is going to involve a lot of splatter, a lot of uh, material coming off the uh, boat and into your face and into your eyes. So if you look to your left, we have safety glasses and a breather mask. Okay. And that'll keep you, uh, you know, perfectly fine throughout the rest of this process. You won't be any damage or hurting yourself. Okay. And then I see we got some gloves just to help keep ourselves clean as we're working. It along. can be a dirty process. It can be a dirty it's nice process. to uh, stay a little bit cleaner. So these are the things that you need to keep safe. Yes, sir. Okay. So from there, let's talk about the beginning and the end, where we're starting, where we want to end up. We use a item called a gloss meter, and this is going to tell us exactly where the gloss level or the level of the oxidation is already on the boat. And when we're done, it's gonna show us where we ended up. Now a 90 on the meter is basically a mirror finish and that's gonna be our goal and we'll see you know, what we can achieve with that. But you guys at home don't have one of these. So we're gonna show you a little trick on how to use one of your bottles of Bright Wash or Pro Polish or Buff Magic or something else you have to kind of get a gloss reading and we'll show you the comparison. So let's start off by getting a before reading and then we'll get into the project. So back to the boat. 
Okay, so let's talk about the initial gloss readings and where we want to head on this boat. And we're going to take a look at two different areas. This is an oxidized area that's never had any names or stickers on it. And then we'll take a look at an area that's had some several stickers and names over the years. Um, we're going to start with our gloss meter. Turn this thing on. It will automatically calibrate. There's a black mirror in here and it calibrates it right around 9091, which is where the reference mirror is, and that's the black mirror there. And we'll take some readings here. Okay, so up here we've got about a 22, a 15, a 22, a 30, that's the best spot we've seen so far, 18, 18, 19. So everything's pretty much under 30, about 13 to 30, which is all very, very dull. Nowhere near the Black Mirror 90, which is our goal for this. If we move over to an area that's been a little bit protected over the years, let's take a look here. We're getting a little bit higher in the 28. I even have a spot that's showing 50, mid 20s, mid 40s. Uh, so a little bit better where it's been protected. Um, but there's been several stickers there over the years, so you don't know which one's had how many years. So we're starting really everything in the uh, below 30 area, a couple below 50, with the goal of getting to 90. Now at home, to again give you a sense of what that would be using the bottle test method, what you do is you take that same area, you lay a bottle vertically against it this way. Uh, nice bright label on this helps it, and you wanna put your head at about a 45 degree angle from where the bottle contacts the boat. And by looking down at it, in this area where we were getting the 20s, you could see very little, maybe up to the black line, but no clarity at all. Over here, where we have a little bit more gloss when we were showing stuff into the 50s, I can see from that same 45 degree angle about halfway up the bottle, but again, with no clarity, can't make out the words or anything. You're gonna see when we start getting up into the 80s and hopefully 90s in some of the areas on this boat, we're gonna be able to see the whole bottle and a lot more clarity of reading the words. So that's a great way to see where you're at and where you're going when you do that. So now that we've taken our tests and our readings and know where we are and where we're gonna be, let's uh, get Sam on over and let's start prepping and doing our first wet sanding area and see where it goes. So Sam, come on over with the cart and start the process of wet sanding the boat. Okay, now that we got all of our safety gear on, let's talk about uh, what we need to do to set up the tool and our first couple steps in getting started. Sure, so obviously you need your dual action polisher. And to set this up for wet sanding, we're gonna grab one of our spacer backing plates. These are flexible and can be purchased almost anywhere, any fiberglass detailer. And you're going to center this on the backing plate. If it's not centered, it'll kind of move in an odd out of round and you don't want that. You want to be as close to even as possible. Okay, and which sandpaper are we gonna start with? We're gonna start with 1000. Okay. It's our uh, most aggressive sandpaper we're gonna be using today. And okay. so it's gonna be cutting into the gel coat a pretty good amount. And now I know there's the sanding side and the Velcro side, so obviously the Velcro side goes against the pad, the sanding side uh, sticks out. So you do wanna check and make sure that you're using the Velcro side against the disc and the sanding side against the vessel. Now, once we have this all set, um, I know you've got your water and soap. What, how much water and soap do we want to put on there? How much pressure do we need on the tool? And any type of pattern we need to use? Sure. Well, this is wet sanding, so we're going to use quite a bit of water. And the reason why is that it acts as a lubricant between the pad and the gel coat. This is, if you dry sand with this, it's going to create a lot of heat and you have a chance of burning the gel coat. With wet sanding, it's much safer. So go ahead and add quite a bit of water to the hull. Once that's done, we're gonna check our speed setting, make sure it's at around a four. I like to run it at this because it's not too fast, not too slow, still cutting a lot of gel coat off without, again, risk of burning or swirling. And I like to use just the pressure of the machine. If you're, okay. if you're pressing in really hard, you're kind of working against the oscillating motion itself and slowing it down. You just want to let the weight of the machine and the pad do the work. Okay, now before you begin, I just want to remind everybody, we are talking about wet sanding here, and everyone's boat's a little bit different. So the thickness of the gel coat that you have left, depending on how many times it's been done before, how much the manufacturer laid up, is something you're gonna to have to figure out and test on your own. So we do recommend you test in an inconspicuous spot 
and you do start with a very, very fine grit paper and you work your way heavier if the fine grit paper is not getting the oxidation out as you need. Now, as I stated earlier, Sam already figured out what we needed for this vessel on the other side. We're gonna put on our safety gear and he's gonna get started and we'll see how this turns out. The most important thing to remember when wet sanding with a dual action polisher is to keep the tool moving. The random orbit that the tool is designed to make provides the best finish when using the proper movement. Do not use a circular motion. We want you to work the tool in a two foot square area, moving forward and backward in an overlapping parallel linear motion across your work area. Once you've reached the end, repeat that pattern, except now in an up and down motion. Using just the weight of the machine when you're on a horizontal surface, or a little bit of light pressure when you're on a vertical surface. Be sure to constantly lubricate the work area with your spray bottle of soap and water. This will help keep the pad from clogging too quickly and also help prevent burning. Make sure to replace your sanding pads regularly as they do become dull. Wet sand until the work area has an even dullness like a matte finish. Remember that you're removing dead oxidized gel coat to reveal the fresh preserved gel coat underneath. If the slurry from the work area gets too thick, rinse, check your progress, and continue as necessary. On the next segment of Project SureFun, Barry and Sam follow up the wet sanding process by compounding the hole, aiming to bring back that showroom shine. Barry visits with Albee Brother Boats to pick up brand new swim platforms. Linex of Sarasota applies a durable spray-on coating to the aluminum work of the boat. And the team at Birdsaw Marine stretches new canvas on the freshly sprayed tea top and more. Come on guys, who left mud on my end screen? We gotta keep this place clean around here. That's better. <laughs> 